One trip lace and I just jump out the porch with dirty glove bastard. Alright, so we got one trip lace jumping off the porch with us today. Yes, sir. How you feeling today, man? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, another day, another dollar. There you Science, go. Same different stuff. I dig that, man. Go ahead and introduce who you got sitting behind you today, too, man. Oh, this is my brother, One Trip Lace. Okay. Blood brother at that, you know what I'm saying? Part of the One Trip movement, so we started. Okay, yeah. that's good, man. All right, so you're originally from Jackson, right? Jackson, Mississippi? Yes, sir, born and raised. Okay, so what was your childhood like growing up there in Jackson, man? Um, I mean, pretty much with, like, any little, any other small city. Um, you know, you got hood areas. Well, especially, like, there, it ain't really much nothing to do to us, so it's like a low property city or not yeah so like pretty much the whole area is like a low property except for like the outer skirts like madison and ridgeland then it's like the more uppity areas but in jackson like yeah it wasn't really much of nothing it's just a little, like another little hood area typical area you know what i'm okay. saying so what were you into as a kid growing up in there uh, music i was into music football i used to play sports okay i love football uh, i was very artistic i was smart you know what i'm saying I did pretty good in school. Um, getting money. I go always, uh, even from selling candy in middle school and shit like that. Yeah. Oh, wait, was that 30 seconds? Okay. Even from like selling candy in middle school and stuff like that, I always had to get my own money because, you know, my mom's in Manhattan have it like that. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted something, I had to go acquire it myself. Okay. Yeah. So at what age would you say you jumped off the porch then? Oh, uh, probably like, like 11, 10. When I started running the neighborhood, about 10 to 11, running the neighborhood with my cousins and stuff, just, you know, doing little kid stuff, getting into stuff. I mean, I went into nothing like big serious stuff then, but, you know, I was out there. Yeah. You got uh, any guidance out there at the time? Oh, uh, yeah. I got my, my mom's in my life, my dad and my stepdad. So, like, yeah, I had people to look up to. Like, I ain't had no bad childhood. It just, we just ain't have it like that. So, it was like, had to get it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that, man. Man, I gotta ask, man, how many tattoos you got, man? Oh, uh, man, I lost count. I ain't gonna lie to you, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm covered from the waist up, like armpits and all. Like, it's just one big piece to me now. Like, I don't know. I can't tell you how many I got. <laughs> a lot of money, a lot of hours. Oh, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. What was the first one you got? Do you remember? Yeah, the first one, I got two in the same day. It's uh, this little heart with my grandma name in it, and it's an angel on my chest. Those are, I got both of those the same day, my first tattoo. Okay. Are you done? You, can you have room to get more? Yeah, I got to start on my leg. <laughs> I'm probably, I'm going to get a tattoo tomorrow, get some stuff touched up on my hands, get a cover up. But yeah, I yeah. ain't nowhere near done yet. I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. done. Yeah. All right, so um, you went to the Art Institute of Atlanta, right? Yeah, I went, um, what year was that? Yeah, straight out of high school. I graduated, moved straight up here that fall. So yeah, I went uh, 2013 to about 2000. 16, I think, is when I stopped going. Yeah, I ain't never finished it though. But, oh, really? Yeah. You went for three years and didn't finish? Yeah, I got, uh, I ended up going to prison and stuff like that. I got into some legal troubles, and by the time sure. I got out, it was like, yeah. How much time did you have to do? Uh, I ended up doing like 16 months total. Oh, sure. Yeah, like five months in the county, and then like 10 months in this little uh, prison program called RSET. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, it wasn't really like prison, prison, but it kind of was. So what were you studying at the Art Institute then? Uh, audio production, like music engineering, live okay. sound, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So why Atlanta? Why'd you choose Atlanta after uh, after high school then? Uh, mainly Art Institute of Atlanta. It was uh, one of the few, one of the schools I had got a scholarship, uh, well, artistic schools I had got a scholarship to. Oh, okay. And um, also at that time, it was like three, four years ago, it was starting to become a big hub for like music and entertainment too. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a double plus. Yeah. So how was that transition for you coming into Atlanta, coming from Jackson? Man? It's a big change of pace, I imagine. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like, the pace is different, but, like, it, it ain't too different besides the fact it's a yeah, faster pace and bigger city. But other than that, like, it's still, like, a predominantly, you know, black area. So it's still, like, very similar besides the fact it's just bigger and faster pace and it's a little more here. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't too bad, too bad on the transition. Okay. You know? Yeah. So what's been one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn so far? One of the biggest life lessons, so I don't know a lot of them, but the biggest one is uh, 
probably um, trying to depend on others. Like, you can't most of the time, you know. You really can't. Like, they most people usually let you down. You know, every now and then you got a few people who can, who you, who you can really depend on. But, you know, half the time people will tell you you can depend on them without even you asking them to depend on them, and they still let you down. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. All right, so how long you been making music? See, I've been making music for a long time, like since I since like middle school. I used to write raps and stuff. So probably about like like 12, 13 years now. Okay. But I wasn't like doing it seriously that whole time. It was just like back then, you know, I was younger and I wasn't even, I was more focused on other stuff as a kid. So I wasn't even like, I don't know, serious shit. I was just like, just writing raps and stuff because I was into music and stuff like that, listening to beats and stuff like that. Yeah. And I ain't, like I recorded my first song I think what eighth grade. Yeah, I think it was eighth grade. Okay. Who were you listening to back then? Who were some of your favorites? Uh, mostly Wayne. Like yeah, back then yeah, I was a big Wayne head. Uh, he the goat. Like, yeah, Wayne. Yeah. So when did when would you say you did start to take it serious? Was it after high school or were you taking it serious during high school too? Yeah, it was definitely like after high school. Um, once I got to Art School of Atlanta, kind of start learning. Cause that's a, another good thing about this school. Like, not only did it teach you how to do that stuff, but it showed you the business end of it too. Mm. So once I started kind of seeing the business end of it, you know, just from school and stuff like that, I kind of started getting ahead of a few things. And um, that's probably when I started taking it serious, like you know, after high school and when I moved up here on my own and started doing my own thing with the school and stuff like that. Okay. So would you recommend for other artists to go to school then to kind of learn the business side of it or? I mean, yeah, it's definitely helpful. I mean, I ain't gonna say like it's necessarily needed. It's not needed, but I mean, if you can do it, for sure. Yeah. All right, so how did uh, One Trip form and uh, who else is also part of One Trip? Uh, so One Trip is me, my brother One Trip, Sante, my other partner One Trip Sleepy, he ain't here right now, he out in Dallas. I know one of our homeboys, One Trip Quay. Uh, it originally started with it was me, him, and uh, my partner Sleepy. Like we like the foundation of it. Uh, it was just some a name we came up with. Um, well, taking groceries out. Yeah, bagging groceries. <laughs> it was like you know one trip. Just you know get out get as much as you can and get it in there making one trip. And then from there we just kind of made it universal as to like have other meanings besides just groceries. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, and it, we found it that way like. 2017, I think, like 2017, okay. yeah. So how'd you get the name LACE? Uh, it's an acronym. It stands for Live and Create Excitement. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's kind of what I go by, live life and enjoy it, create excitement throughout. Yeah, it just came to me one day. I just know, like, I had wanted, uh, I wanted an acronym as a name. I didn't, so I just going through names and the words and letters and until I put that together. Yeah. I got you, man. All right, so uh, what do you feel like brings out the best of you uh, musically? You said the best? Yeah. Is that the best of me? Um, let me see what brings out the best of me musically. I, mean, I don't know, probably just um, my passion for it, really. Yeah, like, I like to express myself through music, and, you know use my music to say what I'm going through and how I feel and stuff I want to achieve and accomplish and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just, you know, a way for me to vent in a way because I'm not really much of a talker, honestly. So yeah, that's pretty much how I vent. Okay. So what's your creative process like? Do you write or do you just freestyle and punch in? Yeah, I usually freestyle and punch in. I mean, like, every now and then, like, if I'm just, like, in traffic or something like that, and I'm listening to a beat or something and some stuff come to mind, you know, I might write down a couple bars or whatever. And it'll be that. That's about as far as I go as writing. And then whenever I get in the studio, and I'm listening to beats, I oh, see if them bars fit that beat. If they do, and I incorporate that and just take it off from there. I got you. Yeah. So how would you describe the type of music that you make then? Um, I guess what like uh, trap ish. I guess trap ish, kind of pop ish. Uh, I try to be versatile with. It. I don't try to limit myself or stay in a shade. I try to try different stuff and, you know, explore my voice and try different things. I got you, man. You know, do you ever feel like giving up on music? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have. I'm sure you know anybody who went through the process or does it have just because you know it don't always make ends meet. Mm-hmm. You know, especially in, in, on top of that, you know, stuff happens in life. Life happens. So you hit roadblocks, you hit different stuff coming up to where you might have to detour from it just because it's not making ends meet and you got stuff you got to take care of financially or it might, you know, you just might not have the time to do it at the moment just because of stuff you're dealing with in life. So, like, yeah, it's been plenty of times I've thought about it, but, you know, when you think like that, you just got to remember that all, for one, all it takes is that one in, in your life and change like that. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but it ain't really no time limit. Like, you know, whether you make a million dollars today or 10 years from now, some people never see a million dollars in 60, 70 years of their life. Yeah, well, that's real. What do you feel like has been one of the biggest sacrifices you had to make so far for your music career? Uh, the biggest sacrifice? Um, let's see, the biggest sacrifice? I don't know, probably like when it comes to like the financial end, like I had to like certain things I just have to let go or I might have put all my money into the music for something and I fell short on some other things to where it took a lot to, you know, to get out of that, you know. So like really my biggest sacrifice comes on the financial end, like putting money into it and falling short in other places before I got into a position to where I actually saved up enough money to be able to do more without having that problem. But, you know, three, four years ago, that was like my biggest issue, like putting money into music and falling short on other things to where, you know, I had to go without or eat noodles every day for X amount of time and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, and speak on some of the challenges that come with being an independent artist also. Uh, financial. That's like one of the, that's probably like the biggest challenge, you know. You need a budget, studio, promotion. Cause you know, even if you got the at home studio and you recording and you ain't marketing and promoting and putting it out there. I mean, who's going to see it, you know, I mean, it's possible, you know, you might look up and, you know, be like a little one hit wonder or whatever to where it just, you just upload it and it, boom. But, you know, it really take marketing, promoting, and it costs money, whether it's reaching out for shout outs or interviews or whatever, like playlists, spins, like people charge for that stuff. So, you know, financially, you got to save money, have a budget. So. So that's a big thing, saving. You gotta save, because you don't need money for this. Uh, networking, you gotta network, you know, reach out to people. Cause that's always good, you know, face certain people, especially people who already have a little, whatever they built, you know, you associate with those people, people see you associate with them, and, you know, that helps you and stuff like that. Um, and just getting out there, period, as far as like, you know, like interacting with other people, not, not even just people of who in, in the music industry, just people, period, just so they see you, mm-hmm. just so they know you. Because that's like a big thing now, especially with social media. The fans want to feel like they know you. Yeah. So, you know, just being out there, period, just interacting, just being out there, letting them see what you're going through. So that, that really helps, too, as far as being independent. Um, and like performing when you can, like, you know, you find like little open venues and stuff like that. That definitely helps as well. And just stay dedicated and like, cause it's gonna get hard and it's gonna be moments where you know, it feel like it ain't working just cause you don't see that right now pro- uh, progress. Mm-hmm. So one of the biggest things is like not giving up and just understanding that no matter how long it take, when it happens, it's gonna be life changing. Yeah. No, it's definitely a grind, especially when you're doing it independently. Yeah, bro. for sure. Absolutely, bro. All right, so you got this new project on the way, man. One Trip Global. What, what can you tell us about this project? Man? Well, it's, uh, it's produced by Spiffy Global. Uh, you know, he do a lot of beats for, like, Hood Rich Pablo mm-hmm. One and stuff like that. You probably know his tag, Hold Up Spiffy on this motherfucker. He was, uh, he was actually supposed to be here today. Let me oh, see. really? <laughs> yeah, I thought he was on the way. Let me see if he messaged me. Yeah, he actually just messaged me two minutes ago. He said he in trap. He said he's still going to be here. But uh, he's supposed to be here too, but yeah, uh, like the whole tape produced by him, except for like the one bonus track produced by um, a guy I met through Instagram called Suburb Dolo. Uh, it's eight tracks plus the bonus tracks, make nine track totals, total. So, and I'm planning to shoot a video for every, for every track on there. Okay. I got like three videos shot already. I think two of the videos are already out, the snow cone and um, location, because I'm with some singles I dropped before. 
I even decided I was gonna put this project out. Um, but yeah, so um, it's probably gonna be one of my most promoted projects that I've done out of Sanko. I'm actually putting together a little budget behind it and reaching out to people trying to, like, as far as like interviews, because like, it's probably the first interview I've done, or well, like real interview I've done, period. So like, I'm reaching out to more networking and try to put a little budget and promotion behind it and putting a little more money into it. But um, so it's gonna be probably one of my favorite projects. I put. Even I ain't put out that many projects so far, but it's probably my favorite project I'm putting out. I have put out so far, and that's gonna be re- dropping October first. Okay. Yeah. So real soon. Yeah, real soon, like two more weeks. So what was it like working with Spiffy on this project then? Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty good. He pretty cool dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, like he got you know placement and stuff like that, but like still humble, down to earth. Like you wouldn't even know that he in the position that he in or accomplish thing he accomplished just by being around him and talking to him. You think he was just some regular dude still grinding just like me or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty cool to work with him. And um, I plan to be working with him a lot more too. We're probably gonna end up doing like one trip global too and a bunch of other little stuff. Okay. Do you know what your first single is gonna be off the project? Now that I'm still trying to decide on, I haven't even, not even 100% certain yet. Yeah. Any features on there, or is it gonna be just um, yourself on there? It, it's one feature on there, and that's my brother wants to okay. contact. He on the uh, the snow cone track, and that's the only that's the only feature I got on there. Everything else is just it's just all me, you know, spit on the production. Okay. So, uh, you plan to drop a video before the project drops, or? See, that's the thing. Like I already um. I already got two videos out from the project, just from prior releases. So since, okay. since those are already out, I'm probably just gonna end up repromoting them, and I probably won't drop another video until the project drops. And that's gonna probably because I, I recorded the intro video, like the first track on the video for the first track on the song, like a couple weeks ago. So they probably probably drop that like either the day of when it drops or not too long after. Okay. And in the meantime, just um keep pushing the two videos from the track that I already got out. Yeah, I got you. So is one trip working on like a collab project, a group project, or? Yeah, I mean like, we ain't like got no names or nothing for it yet, but we you know we are working together and you know doing features and hopping on each other's stuff to where, you know, at some point when we got enough tracks together, we gonna put out like a, a group project. You know, okay, yeah. For sure. And um, I know he working on the project too, but I don't think he gonna release that shit. Oh, what, what's name your shit? Yeah. Okay. And then my uh, homeboy Sleepy, he working on some stuff too. So we got a more individual projects coming too. And then, yeah, at some point we will come, go through the come through the tracks that we don't hop on and put together a whole little one trip little tape too as well. Yeah. What's the chemistry like when all of you guys are in the studio recording together? Then? He's like, cause like we all grew up together. Like we all from Jackson, Mississippi. And like I said, yeah, like that's like I said, that's my blood brother. Like I know him all my life, all his life. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> live together. And then, you know, same thing with my homeboy Sleepy. Like, we all grew up together. So, yeah, like, family, like, it's just natural, you know? It, it just click, it works. It just works perfectly, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because we like family. We've known each other all our lives, really. So it's deeper than music, deeper than anything, really. I got you, man. Is there any artist you want to collab with one day? One day, yeah, for sure. Um, Kevin Gates. Actually, um... I got a mixtape that's hosted by his DJ, BWA Run. That oh, I had really, yeah, I released it back in uh, 2018, like right before I got locked up. Cause I was in tune with him. Um, I got a couple beats from him a couple years back and stuff. We don't have conversations. I don't met his DJ a couple, I ain't never met Kevin him, himself, but I don't been in touch with his DJ, I met his DJ a couple times. But I do want a feature from Kevin Gates, um, Wayne. Um, that's like the biggest two. And, I'm really down to work with whoever though, but like those like two people like when I get on, I gotta get features from. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. What's some of your goals with your music career? What are you trying to accomplish? Uh, I want to go platinum for sure. I want something to go platinum. Um, I want to you know expand the label, be able to do more and you know help others out, put people on for sure. Uh, people I know and just you know people in general who got talent. Um, I want to be international, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to just be like, you know, local or national. I want to be known, you know what I'm saying? So I want to be able to expand genres, not just 
be in a box to where, you know, just hip hop, you know, I wanna go pop, do whatever, just cross over. I wanna come as much as I can. Yeah, I feel that. What's your thoughts on the music scene here in Atlanta right now? Um, I mean, it's dope for sure. Um, it, pretty much anybody who's doing music, if they ain't staying here, they come through here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, you always bound to run into somebody and, you know, the music is definitely popping down here for sure. Like, there's always something going on music-wise, whether it's, um, like, shows, after parties, parties, walkthroughs, whatever. Like, it's always something you always can meet anybody any moment, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, what's next for you, Lace? What else are you working on right now, man? I ain't got nothing in particular that I'm working on. Besides, I'm still shooting videos for the uh, One Trip EP. I'm still doing that, and I'm just, you know, working, dropping tracks. Not dropping tracks, but just making tracks. So um, at some point, you know, once I promote this enough and whatever, and I'm ready to drop the next project, I have a catalog to go through to do that. Um, probably drop some singles some, at some point, but it's really just working on new music, just building that catalog, just so, you know, when it's time for the next project, I'm good to go, stuff like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, any last words, any shout outs you'd like to give before we wrap it up? Uh, a shout out my boy One Trip Sleepy, One Trip Clay, and you know, all the, everybody who support One Trip got anything to do with it. And um, get ready for the tape, dropping October 1st, One Trip Global, because we're going global. I don't really give a fuck about this shit you talking. I'ma keep ballin' regardless. I'ma get money regardless. You get too close, head to